just because there are 14 different tutorials on how to do the thing, or just because parts and the product that we need to accomplish the thing is just one click away, we forget it still takes time to do the things you want to do to get to the place you want to get. Welcome to the Farmish Kind of Life podcast, where we talk about homesteading stuff and life stuff and everything in between. Join me, Amy Dingman, as we explore big questions on a little farm. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Farmish Kind of Life podcast. How are you today? This is episode 271. It is March 18th, 2024. I am so glad you are here today. What is our topic today? Today's topic is basically how to get what I have. <laughs> I, I have a lot of people who say, Amy, I want what you have. I want your farm. I want your homestead. I want the life you're living. I want to be able to do all the things you're doing. How do I do that? How can I do that? Or there's the must be nice that you have everything that you have must be nice. We're going to kind of talk about that today. I'm going to tell you (laughs) the very unexciting but very realistic way that you get what I have or you get what other homesteaders have or you get what other business owners have or you get what other fill in the blanks have. So we will get to that soon. But first, What's been happening on the Lifestead? Well, for the first time, I have started onion seeds here in Minnesota. I haven't started any other seeds yet, but I have started onion seeds because somebody told me, even if you're living in Minnesota, you can start your onions from seeds. You don't have to buy onion sets, which are much more expensive, but that's how I've always grown onions is from onion sets. I didn't even know you could grow them from seeds here. So I've started some onion seeds. Thank you to my two friends who heard that I wanted to do this and sent me onion seeds. So thank you for that. So I've got those started. My husband and I were actually talking just a couple days ago about perhaps starting a few tomato seeds and a few pepper seeds early because we got this early spring going on. And the whole argument here is... If we have an early spring, we want we want to be able to get stuff in the ground. Like if this warm weather lasts, we want to be able to get stuff in the ground. So his argument was, let's let's start a few things so then we have that option, but we don't have like a whole jungle-filled house, which is what normally happens when I start all my seeds, right? And so I, I was considering that. I was like, okay, so should I start seeds? Should I start more seeds now? And now I'm looking at the weather forecast for the end of this week and into next week. And they're talking about snow, like measurable snow, several days of snow, right? Now, I'm not going to get super excited about this because it's too far away to really predict right? They can't tell me what's going to happen tomorrow. So how do they know we're going to get all this snow a week from now, a week and a half from now? But having said that, that's the reality of living here in Minnesota, y'all, and lots of other places too. We get these warm-ups, we get teased, we're out, you know, working in no coat and bare feet, you know, in our yard, because that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm walking around barefoot, don't tell my husband. And, and then we get snow again. What else can I tell you about? The last email newsletter that I sent out last week, Uh, Thursday or Friday, maybe. Y'all, I have never had such a huge response to an email newsletter that I have sent out. I talked about some things in there and I wanted to get your feedback about that. And I received so many responses. So if you responded to that, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to my email newsletter, go to my website. There should be a pop-up that will allow you to subscribe to my email newsletter. I don't send out a ton of stuff. Maybe once a week. Sometimes it's once every three weeks because I forget, y'all. I'm not I'm not going to blast you with emails every day. But go there. Sign up. You can also like scroll to the bottom, I think, and there's probably a sign up. But sign up for the email newsletter. But I sent this email newsletter out last week, and it was basically talking about Well, I asked a couple questions. Number one was, I'm interested to know what you think about homesteading content and prepper content and all the content that's out there in the world. What do you find helpful? What do you find to be over the top and obnoxious? What what are you looking at going, oh my God, homestead content creator, please stop. Please stop doing this. So I had that question. Then I was talking about this group that I wanted to start called the Get By Guys and Gals. And, you know, basically folks who aren't so obsessed with like the tactical prepping or the Instagram homesteading and they want to be like really creative and go, I've got a a rock and a stick and a bucket of water and I'm going to figure out how to make this work. That kind of goes off last week's home. That kind of goes off last week's podcast episode, right? And a couple reels that I put out last week. 
Um, you know, I was talking about people who want to grow their own food, but also they're not opposed to making a pie from store-bought ingredients because they wanted to or because there was a really good sale on the items at the store. You know, kind of people who have their feet in two different spots, you know, two different worlds. You know, we got we want to do things the simple old-fashioned way, but also, okay, we go to the store, we do these things. It's the people who really love reading Little House on the Prairie, but they also love the Tightwad Gazette, right, which is a great book. If you ha- if you don't have that book, you should order it. It's a great, great book. That was like our Bible when we were first married. And some of the information in it is going to be super outdated because it was actually a bunch of newsletters that were um, put up by, her name was Amy, I can't remember the last name, but it was the Tightwad Gazette. That was the newsletter that she had. And so it's all these newsletters that she sent out. And so it's, it's pre-internet or like pre when the internet was popular. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff in there that you're like, that's not even a thing anymore. But there's lots of stuff in there that is really awesome. So check that out. But anyway, so you know, people who are kind of old fashioned, but also okay, saving money, and some of those things are the same, and some of them are not. If you've ever been in a frugal living group, and you hear people freaking out at each other, because, you know, they're they're talking about I want to save money on food. And so they're going and they're buying some cheaper food. And then you've got the people who are like, No, you need to be getting your eggs from the local farmer and spending $7 a dozen because that's important. And I get it. Like, I can argue from both spaces, but do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? If you're really struggling with the money, you ain't buying $7 a dozen eggs from the local farmer. I am sorry. I'm getting all spicy already. We're not even to the main topic. All right. So anyway, what was I even saying? All right. So this newsletter that I sent out, and I was talking about the Get By Gals, uh, or Get By Guys and Gals group. Okay, so I don't know, that might be something that I start up and do something with. It might not. It might not be really anything different than we're already talking about here and on YouTube and on Facebook and on Telegram and all the different places that we're talking. But it it was just something I started talking about. Anyway, all of that to say, there was a ton of responses from the newsletter. And I I just got such great perspective on where you all are and and the lives you're living and what's important to you and what you're so sick of hearing about from homesteaders or air quotes, homesteaders, whatever. So it was really cool. So thank you. Um, I'm reading every single one and I'm trying to respond to all of them. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. What else is happening on the Lifestead? I dragged out uh, one of my incubators that I made from a cooler, dragged it out of the barn, cleaned it up, And brought it in the house. And I'm starting chicken eggs again. Okay. Part of this is because we found a nest. (laughs) And uh, I thought, "Mm, I'm going to stick these in the incubator. But the other thing is, you know, it's really cool to go to runnings and buy baby chicks. And then you're like, I have all these chickens here. Why am I buying chicks? Why am I spending money on that when there's so many other things that I need to spend money on? I should just be using these incubators that we built. So I do have chicken eggs that I started. am not starting duck eggs this year. Not, 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 not. Um, The Muscovies will do that work for me as I have learned. All of that to say, I was supposed to come back this week and tell you, is the incubator video going to be published this week? Well, uh, first of all, I'm actually recording this right now on Saturday. And so it's a little earlier than what you're actually hearing it. The incubator video is very, very close to being done. I am hoping that it is going to be published the week that you are listening to this. However, there's some information I need to get from my husband in order to finish this video. So when I am able to sit down with him (laughs) for 20 minutes and get this information that I need and finish up that part of the video, then I will put the video out. I am so ready for this video to come out, y'all. It has been a project and I will be glad when it is done and I can move on to lots of other video projects. So that's what I have to say. I am hoping that you're going to find the homemade incubator video on YouTube this week. If not, I don't know, send me hate mail. I'm simply waiting for 20 minutes to sit down with my husband so we can go through this video and he can uh, clarify some things for me. So that is that. All right. We're going to head over to the main topic and talk about how to get what I have or must be nice that you have what you have or how do I live that life, Amy? Tell me all that I need to know. Here's the very unexciting but very realistic thing that you need. 
sometimes I get messages from folks who are envious of how we live our life and envious of what we have and envious of what we've done here at our farm. And they'll, they'll be like, I want what you have, right? And while the expected response from a homesteading content creator is this kind of buck up little camper, you can do all of this too, that's not what I'm going to say. And that's not what I say when people tell me that. Because maybe you actually can't do what we've done. Just do what I did is actually a kind of condescending and unrealistic answer. And we're going to dig into that a little bit today. This is our 13th year here at our farm in central Minnesota. 13th year, we moved in the very end of 2011. So quick math, I think that's, we're working on our 13th year here. And getting to this farm took years Years, and they were difficult years. There was some ish happening on the way to getting to this farm, okay? And and to say getting to this farm took years and they were difficult years, that, that does not explain it. That that sentence doesn't explain it. But we're, we're not going to go down that whole rabbit hole today. If you've been here at the podcast for several years, you've probably heard a little bit of the story, and, and maybe I'll tell it again, but that's not, that's not the point of today. The point of today is this. Getting to the life you want, whatever that is, is a process, okay? And it is a process that ebbs and flows. But at the end of the day, the life that you want has to be at the heart of the decisions you're making. Even even when times are getting tough, even when it's a struggle, that life that you want has to be at the heart of the decisions you are making. People will often say to me, how do you do everything? How do you, how do, you do everything that you do? How, how do you have everything that you have? Okay. I had a friend who stopped over the other day, and she was just so excited. She grew up on a farm, and so she was kind of reminiscing about her farm as she was sitting in her driveway. And, you know, she said, it just, like, how do you do everything that you do? You, you just have this amazing place here. How do you do all the things that you do? And I, I get that it looks like I'm doing everything, and that it seems like I'm doing everything, like I'm some kind of fantasy homesteader living here, but I have not done everything all the time, all at once. On a homestead, sometimes the focus is canning, sometimes it's butchering, sometimes it's starting seed, sometimes it's playing with barn cats, <laughs> sometimes it's fixing fences, sometimes it's collecting eggs, sometimes it's me trying to remember how to drive the tractor, sometimes it's splitting wood. And you know what? I had to learn all of that. I had to learn all of that. I didn't know how to do any of that, except for playing with, with uh, barn cats. I knew how to do that, right? That's kind of natural. But learning all of this stuff takes time. And I think something we forget is that in a world where we have this, well, we can just look this up on YouTube. We can just look up how to do this on YouTube or Google. We forget that just because the information is available, like right there, <laughs> or, or just because there are 14 different tutorials on how to do the thing, or just because the parts and the product that we need to accomplish the thing is just one click away, we forget we still need time. It still takes time to do the things you want to do to get to the place you want to get. You don't get where you are all at once. You didn't arrive where you are right now in the span of a day, right? It takes time time. It might look like I have a lot of stuff and then I'm doing a lot of stuff, but it looks like that because of what I've built. I am not doing everything all the time. All I can say is that if you are looking at a homesteader or anyone really, and you want to live that life, pick a skill that makes sense for where you are and learn it. And then pick another one and learn it. But please understand it takes time. There's no way around that. It just takes time. And I know that's not exciting to talk about, but it takes time. If you are someone right now who lives in town 
and you want to move to a farm in the middle of nowhere, you have to make choices in your life that's going to move you towards that reality, but it takes time. Last week, I put out a YouTube video and I talked about one thing that homesteaders forget that they need, okay? And the thing that we forget that we need is margin and space, meaning while you're trying to do all these really cool things on the homestead, pretending like your Ma Ingalls <laughs> back in the 1850s or whatever, life is still happening. Modern life is still happening while you're trying to reach your goal or do the thing. Laundry still has to be done. The kids still need to get to 4-H and wrestling practice. The truck still needs an oil change. You still got to go buy groceries. There's all this stuff that still needs to happen while you're trying to reach the goals and do the thing that you're trying to do. It takes time. It's supposed to. Nate and Aaron over at Two Chicks Homestead did not get everything they have right now yesterday. Nicole Sauce at Living Free in Tennessee did not get everything she has now yesterday. Toolman Tim Cook did not get everything he has now yesterday. The business owner that you are dealing with or the farmer down the road or the teacher that's running your kid's ballet class did not get everything they have now yesterday. There is no such thing as an overnight success. It all takes time. And I think one of the most obnoxious lies that exists today comes with the quickly edited videos and the highlight reels and the picture posts that just don't capture how painstakingly slow some of these processes are, how slow some of the journeys are. When you look forward into the thing that you want, it looks like it's going to take forever. And it does take time. And then the weird thing is that one day someone is like, how did you get to do all the things that you're doing? How are you able to do it all? How did you get all this stuff? And you look back and you're like, wow, hey, we're doing the thing. And you were so wrapped up in doing the thing, you didn't realize how every single slow, painstakingly slow step moved you forward to where you are now. Think about your own life. You are not where you were a week ago, a year ago, a decade ago. Progress takes time. So when people tell me or tell any homesteader or anybody, you know, when they say, I want what you have, I get it. But mostly what it takes to get what anyone has is time and work and patience. And that is so not exciting to talk about, but there's no way around it. That's how you get what other people have. You make a goal, you put the work into it, and you're patient because it takes time. So if in 13 years, you too want to be telling people about your homesteading journey or whatever, and how you can do all the things that you're able to do, you have to start somewhere because it takes time. And anyone who tells you any differently is completely and absolutely full of what I scrape off my barn boots every day. All right, you all, that is what I have for you today. Make sure you head over to YouTube and see if I get that incubator video out. I usually release my long form videos on Tuesday. Not sure that that's when it's going to come out this week, but Stay tuned. If you follow me on social media, you will definitely know when it's coming out. I hope this episode was helpful for you today. It just takes time, you all. You got to start and you got to do the thing. That's the reality of it. There is no such thing as an overnight success. I am super proud of everything that you are doing and how you are helping your family to move forward. Feel free to drop me a line if you'd like, amy at a farmishkindoflife.com. Otherwise, find me on social media. It has been super fun chatting with you today. I will talk to you again soon. Hope you enjoyed the show today. To continue the conversation, visit our website at a farmishkindoflife.com. Find a farmish kind of life on social media or drop me an email at amy at a farmishkindoflife.com. Peace, love, and bacon, y'all. Stay farmish. <laughs>